Hi, welcome to this how to start subdivision modeling with 3D Experience 3D Sculptor. I'm Todd Myers, Senior Specialist for 3D Experience at Go Engineer. In this video, I'm going to share some practices that have helped me and hopefully will help you get started with designing using 3D Sculptor's X Shape application. It helps to have references for what you need to design. On the Tools tab in X Shape, I can select to insert a picture. The dialog asks me which plane I want to insert the picture on. And then I can navigate to a local file that's going to be uploaded and inserted for me. To help with scaling, I have many options like setting snap locations. With the snap set here as the scaling center, any manual scaling by grabbing these dots and arrows, those will be relative to this set location. And the snap points also help position the image where you might want. So in this case, I'm going to position the snap over the location of the origin where all my planes are meeting. So now as I grab a corner of the image, you can see that the snap location stays in the same spot at the origin, but the image is scaling relative to that position. We also have the option to scale our image as a percentage. I'm just going to try it 10%, and that might be too small for my handle. So let's look at a third option for scaling. So this is to scale between on-screen points. What we do is we position the points and then simply enter the distance that you want between them. For this handle, I want a length of 156 millimeters. So I'm just going to type that in and it will scale the image appropriately. Now we have our reference image um, inserted. It might also be helpful to work with some existing models. So on the assembly tab of my menu, I can click to insert an existing component. So I can search for or look through my recent documents for any of the geometry that I want to insert. I'm looking for the weed tool head. Now, depending on how X shape inserts the geometry, we may have some repositioning to do. But when geometry is inserted this way, it comes in anchored. So we need to free it up so that we can reposition it. Selecting the item now in the feature tree gives us a control robot where we can translate and rotate the model into the proper location and orientation. This looks good and now I'm ready to start creating my handle geometry. On the subdivision tab, we have our sub D primitives. Knowing which subdivision model to choose takes experience and experimentation. I'd say it feels like the more you practice, the luckier you get. It's best also to start with fewer subdivisions and add them later if needed. Now you notice I chose a box, but when I remove all but one subdivision, it's essentially a cylinder. So I know the dimensions that I want to generally meet. So upon creation of the box, I'm going to select scale by non-uniform and then it gives me a bounding box and I can enter the values that I want. The length being the most critical. Um, and as I scaled the image for the handle to be 156, I'll do the same for the length of the box primitive. Now with the box, inserted, you notice if I crease the end face of the box with one subdivision on each side, it gives us essentially a round face. And when working with sketches and other inserted geometry, it can help to use transparency of my sub D model so I can see all my references as I start manipulating uh, the geometry. Now I can start adding loops and subdivisions and develop the handle form. Here's a helpful tip when working with scaling. Uh, clicking on the center of the robot lets us reposition it. So this is helpful when I want to scale one side of a loop, but I want to leave the other side unmoved. And I ended up with a square roundish handle. Now if I want to quickly and easily experiment with different iterations, 
I can do that all inside the same file by copying the subdivision body and pasting it into different ordered geometrical sets or OGSs. OGSs can all live within the same X shape or X design component and they're all relatively independent from each other. I can copy models from one set into another and neither will be affected by future changes to the other. Now let's see the different variations by showing uh, the OGSs and repositioning the iterations. My last bit of advice for people getting started with X-Shape would be to insert geometry that you've already created using the CAD that you're familiar with. In my case, it's SOLIDWORKS and using surface modeling. So here I've got a mouse model and I've simply inserted it into the X-Shape environment and then experimented with the different primitives and the solutions that I could achieve with it. And as you can see, I've nearly exactly reproduced the uh, surface model in the X-Shape environment. So thanks for your time. Good luck getting started with X-Shape.